My name is Estelle Brink and I'm with Jerica Walls International Prayer Network. Last week we started by looking at some tips to read your Bible and we touched on different things that's just practical like how to choose a version for where you are now and that's easy for you to understand and then also to get to a place where you actually sit down and start to read. As we continue the session today, I want to say that sometimes we make the mistake by focusing so much on the type of Bible we use and the translation we use that we never connect with the heart of the scripture, which is the heart of God. So never fall into that trap when you engage reading your Bible. So this takes us to the next point in our list, and that is that when you read the Bible, read with an open heart and mind and in context. Open your heart to what God is telling you through his word, but also focus your mind or attention on understanding what you are reading. God is revealing himself in each verse. Be mindful to read within the context those individual verses that stand out for you. And you can do this by reading the whole chapter or the surrounding passages, or even cross-references to that specific passage. That will help you steer clear of coming into a misinterpretation of a piece of scripture by looking at it only as that verse. And I invite you to search for the video series that we've made on how not to read your Bible <laughs> to give you more insight on this point. Then next, as you are reading, pray as you are reading. You know, it's, uh, we have this idea that I have to finish like two or three pages of reading. But if you slow down, something very special happens. Simply reading scripture is valuable, but spending time to turn your reading into prayer makes it even more valuable. So you do not only read, but also pray. And this helps us to have a more interactive experience during our time with God. You know, it says in Isaiah 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So whichever passage you choose to start with, read through it once, and then read through it once more, and then you pray every verse in application to a situation that's on your heart, say your family, or your wife, or your husband, or your children. Do that. Go slow and see what happens when you read your Bible. Then the other th key that I have found for myself is to rewrite what you have read. There are some days when you are really tired or your mind is just filled with so many distractions or thoughts and you struggle to focus in reading your Bible. On such days, it really helps to take a short chapter and simply start by rewriting it into your journal. You will be surprised how your thoughts will begin to focus. This practice is very valuable, especially when we teach children to focus on what they are reading. And it will also help their writing skills a lot if you do that. Have them write out Bible verses to practice their writing, but also to get scripture into their heart. Next, it's important that we will record what the Lord tells us. You know, as we read our Bible, the Holy Spirit starts to speak to our minds about our lives and reading a specific verse or so. Write it down, your feelings. Even turn your thoughts into prayers in a journal. Write out your prayer in your journal. It's like it's cementing it. And then also we come to the fact that we can revisit some passages. Some days maybe you are just paging back into your journal and see what you have prayed through before. I have a little book that I write verses that I pray and it's so nice to page back and remember the different things that happened in my life when I was praying through certain um, passages. Then also, if you struggle, keep the focus on God. You know God is the focus of the Bible, therefore reading the Bible teach you more about God and his attributes, his character, his names, his actions. You can literally write down in your journal these different aspects. For example, 
God is a good God. And then you focus in prayer on his goodness. And you just pause there. Maybe that's all you pray for today. And then you have prayed through the goodness of God. Sometimes I like to do like a theme study of glory. And then I will take glory scriptures and pray them one by one on my mobile device or look them up in my Bible and writing them down. You can also invite a friend to read with you. One day I was um, preaching at a certain church and afterwards three young uh, guys, I think they were nine and ten years old, came to me and they told me how they, once a week, when they gather together, take a passage of scripture and then they read it and then they start discussing it. What does it mean? What does it mean for me? Why is it in the Bible? And they will have a wonderful time together like this and pray for one another. What you can also do is to make a prayer card. And I really like this one. This is now when you read a specific passage and there's a verse standing out to you. And you take this verse and you write it down on a piece of paper and you stick it on your bathroom mirror or you can put it in your pocket or you can share this verse in your family devotions or you can teach this verse to your children and you can in this way meditate on this scripture, keep your reminding yourself of it and it's sort of like stick into your memory. I want to invite you to look at the link to the article on our website in the notes to this video that gives you all the different things that you can do to engage reading your Bible more effectively but even more to engage your heart with God as you turn those verses into prayers. Thank you.